Hey there, honey bunnies. Welcome to episode 133 of the Sovereign Storytellers podcast with your host, Michelle Wolf. And today um, we're going to talk about the systems in the system that we keep trying, hoping will fix our problems, and they don't because they can't. Um, we're going to talk about a lot of things, and it's been a while since um, I've done a podcast. <clears throat> while I was walking around doing stuff, <laughs> which is <clears throat> what I'm going to be doing because I'm cooking dinner. You're going to get to cook along with me. We're having spaghetti squash and um, beef uh, or uh, chunks of beef, I guess, stew meat, I guess, with the spice mix Ajika Georgian Seasoning Blend from Trader Joe's, A-G-I. K-A, probably mispronouncing it. Ajika is a traditional seasoning blend from the country of Georgia, used to add pepper, garlic, and savory notes to dishes. It's delicious. Okay, let's chat. So I was talking to one of my most favorite clients ever and friends, and we were talking about how if a, if a system could fix a problem it would and and i was saying that it can't it literally cannot because it's created out of the same dysfunctional system it was born inside of the system so foundations and things like i'm going to use planned parenthood as an example i donate money to planned parenthood Scraping out the spaghetti squash. If, if noises bug you, this may not be the episode for you because it's the sound quality may be a bit oh, sketchy, a little bit yeah, messy. Um, anyway, I got to get these in the air fryer. So what was I saying? Oh, the uh, foundation. So we look to places like I'm not pick. That's what I was saying. I'm not picking on Plant Parenthood. I'm just using them as an example given the current state of affairs. Ugh. Um, I donate money to them. I do not think any of these foundations should be immediately dissolved. However, I think we have been, this goes back to this conversation we've been having about passivity, correct? We, we keep looking. Mm, I wonder if this spaghetti squash is a little bit old. Yeah, maybe we'll just cook half of it. One side of it, you know how squash, one side of it starts, or uh, there'll be a part that starts to get a little soft. I just hit that spot. So we'll just put that outside. Um, we keep looking for someone to fix our problems. So we give money to Planned Parenthood. We give money to, you know, depending on what side of the fence you're on, is who you're giving money to. We give money to NARAL. Uh, we support, we give money to Stacey Abrams. I sure do. Um, we donate to the things, uh, the people, places, people's places and groups that we think are going to do it for us, right? We think, okay, well, I'll put the money out. I don't have enough money. We, we're talking about how, you know, neither one of us have enough money to go buy a politician. I don't know about the last time you've priced buying a politician, but it ain't cheap. We don't have a marketing team or the ability to hire a PR company to start, you know, a revolution that way. But what we can do is stop looking out there for the thing out there to, oh, please, God, fix the problem. Fix it. We can throw money at this stuff all day long. It won't be fixed by the foundation. It won't be fixed by a, a, a company. It, it's going to be fixed heart to heart. It's only going to change when we, well, I'm not going to say it's only going to change. It's changing and we can go with it or we can keep kicking and screaming and sending all our money to Planned Parenthood. <laughs> Again, don't stop donating. Um, <laughs> that... Things are a process, right? These things are a process. They're not, they don't happen overnight. So, um, oh shoot, I put too much foil on the air fryer rack and now it doesn't want to go in there. Look, I just want to cook a little half of a little spaghetti squash for Pete's sake. 
hold please all right we did it we got it in there so um it's an energetic thing okay, so i'm talking about energetics try to think in terms of the metaphors and the energetics of these things okay um the energetics of this are to stop looking for a parental energy that you call God or the universe or uh, Stacey Abrams or, uh, you know, your boss. Stop looking. And it's okay, right? We're trained to think in hierarchies. We're trained to hand our power over to the man, <laughs> to the system, because we think if we do the right things, the system will take care of us. And what we're finding out quite painfully is the system doesn't give a fuck because that's not what the system is about. The system is about surviving to support, I'll, I'll use the word overlords. I was going to say for lack of a better term, but maybe that is a good term. The people running the show that we seemingly have no control over we're trained to keep those people happy you know if you complain you get kicked out of the tribe if you say you know what i'm not i'm not going to work a traditional job i'm going to go be a hippie in mexico or whatever <laughs> you're looked at like a lunatic uh, because we have formed communities around fear and it happened so long ago we don't really even know any other way we, when we are in community based on what our fear of what will happen if we're not in community, that's not really a community. That's group protection. It's group enslavement. It's group uh, uh, like indentured servitude or whatever. You know, the words are really hard to find for stuff, but I'm trying my best to get it across that that's not community. Community is we do the jobs that we're suited for that we don't force ourselves to do work that is really painful now there's you know there's value in challenging yourself to learn new things and and to exceed your uh limits of what you think you can do like if you'd asked me uh five years ago if i'd be doing anything website and seo content writing and technical stuff related i would have just laughed and laughed and laughed but that's a big part of what I do now um, if you'd have said to me even two years ago that I'd be doing channeling on a podcast I really would have thought you were nuts but I'm doing it but you can't wait for someone to give you permission to do it you can't look to your school or your employer to tell you how your life is going to be you can't just coast 20 years at a job and expect that you're going to retire and everything's going to be golf courses and mai tais uh, and vacations in i was going to say florida but the, um, no offense if you're living in florida but uh that's not uh, florida's not for me let's put it that way um Georgia's hot enough. And my God, our palmetto bugs look like they came straight out of Jurassic Park. And Florida's are bigger. So let's just not even go there. Um, your company's not going to do it for you. Your 401k's not going to do it for you. Your investments are not going to do it for you. Again, I'm not saying don't do these things. I'm saying take your energy back out of them. Call all your energy back to the present moment. We've given our energy away to people we donate to, organizations that we think are going to get the job done, but they can't. It's not that they don't want to. Do you think people at work, work at Planned Parenthood are not actually trying? They're trying. It's impossible. It's set up to be impossible. And we go vent our rage. And we think we're doing something. And nothing changes and what we've seen in the last few years, we continue a downward slide. Okay. So how do we stop doing that? We energetically call our power back to us. 
we start to say, okay, I'm going to donate money to Stacey Abrams because that's what's in front of me right now that I can do. And I feel like my human self needs to do something. I don't know if it's going to make any difference and I'm not going to attach to that. But I'm going to give some money because that's what it feels right to do. And I am not going to expect that donating money and getting Stacey Abrams elected is the answer. Because it isn't. These will, things will continue. You will continue to feel like you're drowning until you recognize there's a life raft right in front of you. Reach out and grab it. It's called taking your power back. It's called not expecting government A, B, or C to ship you out a life raft disguised as a COVID test. <laughs> Our free, our air quote free COVID tests, right? I've got a whole stack of them now. I'm all set. <laughs> there goes the aluminum foil. Um, it's our, it's our inner, it's our energetic expectation. So you have to take a moment. Remember, we've talked about how we slide along the continuum of our five cents human experience. What we can do, like I can donate some money to Miss Abrams because I love her. And I do think she'll do some good things. But listen, she's stepping into a, a system that is determined to maintain and, and to go back to 1800s. The Southern Democrats are, have been reincarnated as modern day Republicans. And they are determined to get the shot that Lincoln denied them. So... Let's understand that Miss Abrams is, is limited in what she can do. She can do some stuff, and I want her in there. Because if nothing else, I, she certainly won't make it worse, or not on purpose anyway. But I don't expect her to be the answer. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, from a soul energetic level, nobody out there has the answer. Nobody. You can go march in the streets. That's fine if that's what feels aligned to you. But that's not going to get you the answer. And historically, it doesn't really create a lot of change. Not quickly, anyway. Some things come, but not at the level we would like them to. Our expectation of out there being the answer for us is out of alignment. It's, it, it's just wrong. It's a... It's the wrong answer. The question is, how do we make this a sustainable world for all of us? And the answer is, go take a nap. Write one page of your wisdom down. Write one note of a song that's in your head that you've never had the guts to write. Say one thing to a person that you need to say. Without attachment to what happens to it after it leaves your field. Write that book, put it out there, and let it go. Sing your song, put it out there, and let it go. Say what you need to say, put it out there, and let it go. The job, the work, is the putting it out there. The bringing the intangible through your tangible physical body and out into tangible reality. That's your job. To take that thought, that inspiration, and turn it into a book, a flower arrangement, babysitting, a, ch a child, your grandchildren, uh, cooking a meal, having a thought that you want to reorganize a closet and finding a pillowcase you've been looking for for six months. <laughs> that was my morning. It's a pillowcase that... Uh, was given to me and I absolutely treasure it. And it has always been my forest reiki cloth, like an altar cloth. And for six months I could not find it because, it, and I looked in this closet, it was in the bottom of a yarn basket that had gotten tipped over on the top shelf of this closet. And I couldn't see it. I looked in there like a hundred times. Today in my meditation, I was like, you know what? I, I've just got to sort that closet. And there it was. Your job is to do what's in front of you to do. 
This morning, what was in front of me to do was to do my morning routine and then follow the inspiration that came on the heels of that, even though it made no sense. Stand up from a nice prayer session, meditation, and go clean the closet? <coughs> Ew. But I listened, and I found something that's very important to me. And I, irreplaceable, because I don't... Uh, I've looked for it one uh, online, couldn't find one. What is calling you to act on that makes no sense? What has been in your mind to do, but you can't do it by yourself and you haven't been willing to invest in getting support, invest in asking or investing in financial exchange for somebody to guide you through the creative process. We keep thinking we can do it by ourselves. We cannot. If we could do it by ourselves, we would have done it already. Y'all who come through less hustle and get your stuff out in the world you just needed a little bit of support you just needed a little structure but that's not everybody some people really have to have a a, a coach all the way through from inspiration to production it's a rare person that, well, I'm going to say it's no people that get the stuff out in the world with no help whatsoever. Somebody helps along the way. But it's person to person. It's generally not foundation to person. Even though we think all our answers are going to come from some structure outside of ourselves. You know why we think that? Because that's what we've been told. Don't make your own decisions. Let your financial person Make your decisions, Bernie Madoff. Don't, uh, don't, uh, don't investigate politicians yourself. Just vote who the pastor tells you to vote for. And if you think I'm exaggerating, I'm not. I can't even tell you how many people voted for Trump because their, their, uh, uh, their church person told them to. And then they ended up feeling, like so many of us, disillusioned in the extreme they were told and they listened because they were used to being told and listening and acting and doing what we're told because that keeps us in the community and we're too scared to be outside of the community because we could die none of which is true it's a lie it's a lie to think that Planned Parenthood can fix it. They can't. It's a lie to think that sending $5 to Stacey Abrams' campaign is going to fix things. It won't. It won't. And by thinking that it does, I write the check for $5. Well, check. Who writes a check anymore? I click the PayPal button to send $5 and then I abdicate responsibility energetically. I don't think about it anymore. I, in the global sense, that's not what I personally do. We abdicate responsibility by clicking the PayPal button. By listening to people in leadership positions say, if we'll just support them and fund them they'll take care of it so we do that we support and we fund and we abdicate we don't think about it we don't have to think about it because we sent the five dollars in and salvation army <laughs> Ooh, what a terrible example uh you know planned parenthood's going to take care of it so we don't have to think about it we don't have to invest in it we don't have to be personally responsible for it because we paid our five dollars do you see it's an energetic abdication of responsibility. It's a thinking that I don't have to worry about this because I voted for so-and-so and they told me they were going to take care of it. And then we're all hurt when so-and-so doesn't take care of it and makes a big mess of stuff. We're like, what are you doing? You didn't keep your part of the deal. The deal was I was going to support you. You were going to get elected and you were going to take care of this stuff. What the hell? <laughs> right? So, 
We've been bamboozled and lied to and trained for generation after generation after generation to look to the landlord to give up our family farms and go work in the factories. And then in exchange, we'll be taken care of. And for a while, that might have worked. But then greed, human nature kicks in. People figure out if they pay you less but hire more people, burn you into the ground, they can make more money, and then it doesn't really matter what happens to you because you're a cog in a wheel that's easily, so easily replaced, usually for less money. Jeff Bezos' business model. Also, no exaggeration, it was written. <laughs> Get these people in here, burn them out. We don't want people to stay because then they're going to want retirement plans. And then they're going to want raises. So just make it so horrible that they quit and then we can hire the next person in line for minimum wage or even double minimum wage, but whatever, you know, even hiring, paying more works out in the long term if you don't keep people long term. You just churn them, churn and burn employees. There's a, a thought that people who are caring normal people don't understand the kind of pathology that comes with being able to become a multi you know a gazillionaire you have to be willing to use your fellow humans to use them to use them and abuse them and not care about them and still feel good about yourself you have to be willing to do that to make those levels those kinds of um Money. That kind of money comes from exploitation. And those of us who are, are like appalled by that can't understand that there's people who actually really only care about the gold airplane seat buckle on their private plane. They don't give a shit that five people work themselves into the ground in order for them to be able to afford to have gold seat belt buckles. They don't care. We're not a thought in their head. We don't exist. We can't understand that because that's not the nature of who we are. But that is the nature of who they are. And we need to stop dreaming and thinking that that's going to change if we just get the right opposite type person. <laughs> right? If we just get the opposite person, it'll be okay. But it won't. Because we're still giving our power away. And so much of this is returning. You know the irony. The horrible irony. Of this movement to return power to the states. A bunch of garbage. The states have proven they, don't, they can't do it. <laughs> that they'll just. You know that's how. What happened with slavery. States' rights. We, get, we can enslave people and be horrible if we want to. And the rest of the country was like, no. You, you obviously cannot govern yourselves. <laughs> but the irony in that is we are needing to take back not our state's rights, but our rights as a human being. Our energetic sovereignty. We're being pushed to reconnect to our heart because a connected heart does not churn and burn through employees. Doesn't make 5,000% more than the lowest. 5,000 is probably a ridiculously low number. 100,000 times percent more than the person doing the line work. A, a connected heart doesn't do that. We have examples of that. There's companies out there where the highest paid person ca is by company statute not allowed to make more, so much percentage more than the lowest paid worker in the factory. So that lifts everybody up. So we have models for it. But we're still thinking in these disempowered ways that we've been trained in. And that's where we need to stop. It will happen person to person to person to person. 
but the most microscopic invisible action to take to begin that is asking what can I do what can I do in this moment about the kind of energy that I'm allowing to exist in my physical body? What, what power do I have in this moment to create something, to bring a vision into the world, to get a piece of paper and a pencil and create a drawing, to bring an energy from intangible to tangible? Doesn't that sound like ridiculous? It does, doesn't it? It sounds like, how can that possibly be helpful? I should be heading down to Atlanta to march in the streets. But that won't help. I'm not saying it won't. It's, that's not your path. For me personally, I know that would not help. It would not contribute to the field what would be effective. What will be effective is me making a podcast episode, taking some thoughts, strapping on a headset and carrying my phone around while I'm cooking dinner talking to you. That is taking intangible concepts and making them tangible, turning them into sound vibrations so your little honey bunny ears can pick it up and hear it and maybe spark an inspiration in you that you can then make tangible. You see? This is more effective than a $5 donation to an organization that's so large it really cannot make the kind of difference we think it can. We want it to, that they want it to. It's not possible. Not with the way things are now. I think we've seen that. It's been proven to us. So, I know I'm rambling a bit because I'm not I mean, I'm never entirely focused, but I'm definitely unfocused trying to cook this dinner. <laughs> so I'm super hungry. But just boil it down to take all the upset that you feel today about whatever, the state of the country, the state of the world, the state of your laundry room, the state of your, uh, your kids getting along with each other or, or whatever it is, your dog that's sick or whatever. Take whatever's uncomfortable for you. And instead of thinking, if I could just fix this, then I could feel comfortable. If I could just get the dog well, then I'd feel comfortable. If I could just get my kids to stop fighting with each other, maybe then I could create. If I could just quit this fucking job and go uh, have all this unstructured time, maybe then I would create. But you wouldn't, because you'd be waiting for someone to tell you what to create. <laughs> And then you'd be right back here where we're talking about where you have to be the one to make the decision. You have to be the one to take the thought and turn it into sound so it can hit somebody else's ears. Or to write it down on a piece of paper so that someone else can read it. So that they may, you may be the answer to their prayer. What you write down that seems random may be found by some person and then it ends up saving their life or changing the trajectory of their life. You don't know. It's not your job to know. It's your job to take what's inside of you and bring it out into the world. And then our capitalist brain says, and then I'll start an Etsy shop and then I'll sell it and I'll make a million dollars and then I too will be a billionaire. That's what we're breaking. You create it and you take it and you make it tangible for the sake of making things tangible, for the sake of proving to yourself that you are a sovereign being who can take invisible things and make them visible. A thought is not visible until you make it visible through writing or art or speech or asking the universe Take me, point out to me, give me an inspiration. Where's the better vet for my dog or whatever? Asking your team invisible to give you some input and then evaluating that input for yourself. Not just saying, my guides told me to and it didn't work. Well, 
We don't know. Was it your guides, really? I mean, we don't know. We get lost in those realms. You still have to check it out. You still have to be responsible. You can't look to your guides to give you all the answers either. They'll give you answers. But you still have to be the one that puts your own ass on the line implementing them. And if they don't go well or if they blow up in your face, you don't blame your guides. You look at where did I get off track? Did I forget to check with myself? Did I forget to test my own uh, strategy and authority? Did I lose myself? Was I abdicating my energy to what I would call my guides? Because if we're approaching our guides in the same energy of feed me information like I'm a baby bird and then I'm going to act on it, but I'm still not going to take responsibility. Well, can you see how that might get wonky? If you approach your guides from the perspective of colleagues. Hey, I've got an idea. What do you let me run this past you and you tell me what you think and then I'm going to go and I'm going to make a decision from my own sovereignty because I am responsible for myself and my choices. I don't hand my power over to an oracle card or a psychic or a medium or anyone. Not to a church leader, a parent, a government official. You do not hand your power over to anyone. You or at the end of the day, responsible for the actions that you take. Not them. You are responsible for coming up with creative solutions to the problems that we're facing yourself. Not handing over the responsibility to Planned Parenthood. Not handing the responsibility to President Biden. Not donating a check or donating some money and thinking that's enough. That's all you have to do. It isn't. You are filled with life force. And you have been taught to keep a lid on it. To stay safe. To be protected in your community. And what is happening is if you don't take that lid off yourself, it's getting snatched off. And all that stuff is coming out because it has to. Because life will always grow. A dandelion will always bust up the concrete. No concrete stays the way it is forever because the plants underneath it will eventually bust it up. Because life will grow with or without you. What decision can you make today? To bring something from inside outside. Where can you look at in your life that you've been handing your responsibility over to somebody else? Where are you making decisions thinking that, oh, this person will fix it for me instead of doing one small thing today that can fix your problem with your health? One small act today might be skipping dessert. One small act today might be, if you're going to watch TikTok all day, then you stand up and you walk around the house while you're doing it. Hopefully you don't run into anything. Let's say that differently. If you're going to watch TikTok all day, you stand up and you just march in place while you're doing it. That's one small act to bring some energy inside out. What is it creating? Health, muscle, moving the lymph in your body. You are bringing something inside out of your own volition with your own sovereignty and taking your own responsibility this overall is the end of victimhood victim thinking and passive approaches to life did you hear the air fryer go off <laughs> thank you for hanging out with me while I cooked my dinner and now I'm going to let you go and um, you go and do your thing. Think about something you can bring out into the world. Think about where you're abdicating responsibility. Make a different choice today. See how it goes. 
if you want some hand holding and some support for bringing that stuff out, Less Hustle More Human Design is still open for enrollment right up until January 10th. So you can come and join us in there if you like. That michellewolf.com forward slash Less Hustle. There's a Facebook uh, live stream on my page. You don't even have to join the course. You can get enough free that you can do it yourself if you want. So, until we meet again, think less, feel more. Love y'all so much. Bye for now.